Hello everyone, my name is AJ Sappenfield and today I'm going to walk you through the 2008 B-2 Spirit stealth bomber crash in Guam and explain how it illustrates the urgent need for broader regulatory action in aviation safety like what's proposed in the Aviation Engineering Safety Act of 2025. On February 23, 2008, a U.S. Air Force B-2 bomber, one of the most advanced and expensive aircraft in the world, crashed during takeoff from Anderson's Air Force Base in Guam. This B-2 was from the 509th Bomb Wing based at Whiteman's Air Force Base in Missouri. Both pilots survived, but the aircraft valued at over $1.4 billion was a total loss. At first, people speculated about pilot error or mechanical failure, or even foreign sabotage, given how secretive the B-2 program is. But the investigation revealed something far more ordinary and far more troubling. The real cause? Moisture. Specifically, the island's high humidity caused condensation to form inside the aircraft's sensors and control systems. This interfered with the aircraft's fly-by-wire system, which relies entirely on electronic signals instead of mechanical linkages. That moisture corrupted air pressure readings, which caused the flight control systems to generate incorrect takeoff data. The aircraft lifted off with the wrong angle of attack, stalled, and crashed before it could gain altitude. So despite both pilots following protocol, and despite the aircraft performing flawlessly in dry climates, a simple environmental factor, like moisture, exploited a blind spot in the B-2's design and maintenance procedures. This is a textbook example of the reason model or Swiss cheese model of accident causation. There were latent conditions, like the unknown vulnerability to moisture and the lack of realistic environmental testing in human regions that had never been fully addressed. The act of failure was the system misreading airspeed and the angle of attack due to sensor interference. Even though the pilots and maintenance teams followed procedure, the organizational structure and insufficient oversight of environmental testing allowed a chain of small failures to align. The shell model helps us understand where the breakdown occurred, specifically in the interaction between the software, system logic, hardware, the sensors, and environment, the humid air. There were no errors from the live wire, the humans, but they were let down by the system design. This crash is exactly why legislation like the Aviation Engineering Safety Act of 2025 is necessary. The bill mandates rigorous environmental and failure mode testing of all critical aircraft systems before certification, including in humid, cold, or corrosive environments like Guam. It also requires independent engineering oversight boards with no financial ties to the manufacturer to review test data and to validate safety. And for the existing fleets, it funds a retrofit grant program to upgrade electronics with moisture-resistant hardware and redundant control systems. If this kind of oversight and testing had been in place before 2008, the flaws of the B2 sensors and control systems may have been caught and corrected potentially saving $1.4 billion and preventing a near-fatal crash. Some may argue that this level of oversight is costly or slows innovation, but the cost of one crash financially, politically, and potentially in lives is far greater. Retrofitting critical systems isn't just about avoiding financial loss. It's about protecting pilots, passengers, and national security assets. The B-2 crash wasn't an isolated failure. It was a symptom of a broader issue in aviation oversight and testing culture. To wrap up, the B-2 crash shows how even the most advanced aircraft can fail when safety assumptions go unchallenged. We can't rely on ideal testing conditions and hope for the best. We need structured accountability, and that's what this legislation provides.